Hello, welcome back to the Be Your Own Style channel. Today's episode is all about the Bridgerton aesthetic. Bridgerton fun. We're going to escape into the world of Bridgerton, which is romantic and colorful, whimsical, beautiful. We're going to unpack that whole inspiration and then we're even going to head to the thrift store and just kind of see what we can find that might go along with that inspiration. But what I'm so excited about is that I am not doing this alone. I'm doing this in collaboration with Anna Margaret, or you can call her Margot. She is based in North Carolina. And if you go back to last summer, I had the chance to visit her and Liv of County Fair. And we just had a super fun day together thrifting. I feel like we all kind of love thrifting and vintage in the same way in this discovery and creating from this really magical place. And so I've stayed in touch with both of them and Margot has been really in the whole YouTube world for the, I think the last year now. And so it's so much fun to see her magical channel just constantly pumping out so much incredible inspiration in her videos. And if there is someone I think of when it comes to Bridgerton inspiration and the whole aesthetic, Anna Margaret is the person. First of all, Anna Margaret is just the coolest, sweetest person. I had so much fun hanging out with her. I wish we lived closer, but we're gonna do this video together, which feels like we get to hang for a little bit. Um, she really is so incredible. She owns with her husband a coffee shop that I was able to sip some lattes from. And then I got to get a sneak peek of the restaurant they were opening as well, which I think is open now. And if you just go and look at both of those places, you will just see how incredible she really is and her eye for interior design. And then it translates into her home. So go to her Instagram because you will just feel like you've traveled back in time and you're in the English countryside. And it's seriously, I'm looking at her Instagram right now. Like even just the color palette, just. It's kind of, I don't know why, but it makes me feel like butter. <laughs> Just like a really churned pot of butter. Do you churn butter in a pot? I don't know, but it feels wonderful and sweet the way butter makes things. Okay, that's enough of butter, but um, I mean, I'm looking at her closet, which is just this whole room. She's created this incredible little space to put all her fabulous dresses on, her home interiors, the restaurant. It really is just um, truly such an experience to be a part of Anna Margaret's world. And I'm so glad that she's doing YouTube now and bringing you into that world. And you get to actually see the whole process of how she creates her homes and all of it. And so we are gonna have fun today together because we're both gonna take that inspiration, head to the thrift stores and just kind of see what we both can find. And I'm gonna do it in my way in the sense that my home not isn't necessarily Bridgerton vibes, but I do really love it when it comes to the style side of things. And so this will be kind of fun for me because as you can see, I'm having fun uh, styling it already. It made me kind of dive into that world and look at the inspiration. And so let's unpack that and even just key items, if you want to kind of pull off this look and bring some of this into your life and into your closet, and even just some designer collections that I feel like are a great resource to get more of the inspiration in the current day, not just looking at period pieces and period dresses. So let's unpack that inspiration. First of all, Let's just uh, touch on Bridgerton itself. The show, uh, if you haven't watched it, it's on Netflix and it's set in the Regency era in London society. And I actually just finally watched it. I hadn't watched it and I really loved it. It was, it was really fun and it's, you know, very romantic and it's really like eye pleasing, just all the colors and the interiors and everything, and you just feel swept into this almost fairy tale land. 
One thing I really noticed that was huge, which I think is just a really great jumping off place for the inspiration of the Bridgerton aesthetic is the color palette. So much of the show is done in colors and you'll see even characters and families represented through color, which I think is so cool. The Bridgertons were known for their Wedgwood blue is what they were called. And that really represented like luxury and status of the family. And there's like a calming presence to that. And then I think the Featheringtons had more what they were calling acidic colors. So almost feeling like Versace color palette, really bright and bold and like a little bit, well, but beautiful as well. So I just think that's just touching on the very basic level of the Bridgerton color palette, but I think just even looking at Bridgerton and searching, you know, Bridgerton color palette is a really fun way to get a sense of just what you could take into you know, your thrift and treasure hunting, looking for just some of those blues or some of those acidic colors. And then there were new um, characters represented in the new season that had a whole different color palette. So I think that is just a first place to start is the color palette. Okay, and then when it comes to the style, of course, this is a period piece and we can't, you know, we're not wearing the full Empire Waist corseted gowns and all of that, but you can take little pieces of all of it, which are all things that I already love anyway. So I think the first thing is just looking for dramatic and puff sleeves. Um, I love a puff sleeve. It's, it feels just, I don't know romantic. I think ever since I was a little girl, I've just always loved a puff sleeve. It seemed like the best thing ever. And you were just going into the world ready to take on the day. So a romantic puff sleeve is a must have. And that square neckline, if you can find that, then you really have set the tone for the Bridgerton look. A big thing that was all over all the looks were pearls so pearl jewelry pearl accessories pearl brooches which i'm kind of wearing more of a maybe a little bit more of a rock and roll pearl hoop situation here but anything with pearls uh is just on point and so you could do little pearl hair accessories earrings pearl rings um, necklaces all of it so just really exploring and having fun with pearls we cannot not talk about corsets. Corsets, of course, were underneath all of their clothing, but I feel like that's the new modern interpretation of that was taking the corsets and bringing it into outerwear, which I've been loving wearing corsets over things like an over a dress or over a shirt. And then of course, now that we're going into summer, wearing them on their own or you know, throwing a blazer over them, I think it adds a little romance to the look somehow. And I love their, if you go back to an old post of mine, I think that was in the fall of last year, I had a dress, I have my 1940s dress uh, from Madly Vintage and it has buttons on the front going down to the waist and then it kind of billows out from there. So I actually threw a corset over top that and left some of the buttons undone and then let that dress kind of hang off my shoulders. It felt really romantic and it really did kind of feel like it came from a different era. We saw a lot of headbands within the Bridgerton series. And I think the difference here, instead of that kind of Blair Waldorf um, headband, it's more tiara based or tiara inspired. So it has a little bit of rhinestones or you can have little pearls in it, feel a little more dainty. And that's actually something I don't really have. So I like the idea of maybe looking for a vintage piece to kind of add that adds some sparkle. This is one that I'm wearing today. Well, I kind of built it today and I'll show you in a little bit what I'm wearing. Um, kind of the idea of the fancy house dress, floral house dresses, and it could even be kind of billowy and exaggerated. Um, and I think those are so much fun as the weather starts to get warmer to just throw on those floral house dresses and then throw on any kind of shoe, a sneaker. I love a chunky sandal with it. Of course, um, you know, throwing on heels if you wanna really dress it up. But I actually like the juxtaposition often of this almost dainty tea style house dress mixed with a chunky or tough shoe. And then in terms of shoes, 
it's been interesting. There's been a little bit of a return to the ballet slipper shoe, maybe with a heel on it, like a block heel. And I do think a lot of that is coming from this inspiration, almost like those beautiful little fancy shoes, dancing shoes. Um, or it could have feather trim on it, which I'm thinking of those amazing heels that I have from the kit vintage that have, they feel like little bedroom slippers, but upgraded with a heel that you can wear anytime. So just any kind of either embellished little slipper shoe or the ballet, you could even do ballet slippers if you wanted. Um, and I think that would be really fun as well. Or one with just like a little bit of a block heel and maybe it's silver or it's gold or it's pink or it's got some cool little rhinestone details. Think Regency mix with a shoe. If you really want to go for this look, you could add gloves into your outfits. And I have picked up a few and I've had fun wearing them. I will say they're a little bit harder because you have to take them off anytime you need to use your phone, I feel like, right? Unless they're fingerless gloves, which that would also be really fun. But I think, you know, if you're going to a wedding this summer or even a any kind of like celebratory event, wear gloves. And if anything, it might make you take a social media break, which would probably be good. So anyways, I think gloves are a really fun idea and even ones that have like a lot of color to them or over um, elbow length gloves or even over the elbow, something really dramatic and romantic. And then just some little styling details that I noticed is the addition of black ribbon added to dresses. And that can be a really uh, bold color dress or in my case today, like a floral number. And you'll you can see I added this little black ribbon. I actually tied it onto a brooch that I'm wearing right here. And I love that idea. It seems so simple, but I feel like it's something we don't necessarily go to. So tying a black ribbon around your waist and putting a bow in it, or you could do this, like tie it onto a brooch. If you have straps, you could do two bows on the straps. That would be so cute if you have a floral little sundress style. Maybe it's a little fitted at the waist and then flares out. You could do two little black bows tied there or even put black bows in um, braids. So I think playing with black bows is like a fun little detail that you could take from that time and bringing it into the modern day. And then this is just something I thought of. Uh, you see a lot of the women wearing feathers in their hair and I love that idea. Of course, not like a huge one popping out, but I think finding a feather, if you have your hair up, if you're going to something, if you're going you know, to any kind of soiree or wedding or I don't know, summer under the stars, something, I think adding a feather would be so much fun. And that's something I'm gonna keep my eye out for is feather accessories for my hair. In terms of looking to current runway designers, that would really be a great resource to be inspired of what's happening now, but inspired by the Regency era is, let me just, I'm gonna list off a few and then I'm gonna unpack two that I think this season would are perfect. But I love Brock Collection. They always do really romantic, often using corsets. It often feels like Every piece could be taken into the countryside of England um, and just running through the fields of flowers. So Brock Collection I love, and then also Rodarte often has that same appeal of just really romantic, feminine pieces. There's a lot of tool used, a lot of almost like ball gown style or florals or super exaggerated or head pieces. So Rodarte is also a great option. In terms of this season, collections that I saw that I love are Simone Rocha, which did almost like a deconstructed punk version of Regency. And I love it. It's just like, ah, all the pieces are layers of tulle and lace, but then there's usually a tough element added to it, like a big chunky black combat boot. There was also layering over pieces. So almost corsets, or cropped corsets put over really billowy puff sleeve tops. And there was some nightwear kind of mixed in as well. And what I really loved was the idea of taking a kind of double breasted jacket, maybe with some more dramatic sleeves and then adding a corset on top of that and corseting the jacket. And then underneath the jacket, maybe there's you know some lace popping out and then paired with a big chunky boot. So I, love this whole collection. It's just, it's so much fun because it's a lot of different ideas 
um, balancing each other out to make something really cool. And everything is exaggerated and totally just bold and fabulous. And then the other collection that I really love is Airdem, and I might be saying that wrong. Um, they always have collections that feel like they're from a different era from a different time. There's often a use of hats, gloves. So I've I've really loved their collection for years. And this time, again, taking some of that same inspiration, there might be a floral, but there were some kind of like twisted elements to it and mixed with this almost kind of ghostly feature, but then still just really dramatic floral dresses. But then it was always juxtaposed. There was menswear often thrown in what I loved was the use of brogues, like uh, menswear loafer style shoes with these really beautiful dresses and even, you know, gloves and hats. So I really liked the pairing of the two. And then something else that I noticed that they did, which is again, taking from that Regency time, but then combining it in a new modern way is having a dress and then taking a sheer piece that maybe would have been an undergarment and putting it on top of the dress. So letting that print or that dress kind of pop out from underneath the sheer. Again, I saw that use of black ribbons mixed in with some of these dresses and I really loved that. Even the mix of the brown brogue with the black ribbon. So don't get stuck that if you're wearing black, you can't wear brown. And so those are the different collections that I think are great inspiration for me as I head into the thrift store and look for some of this, but also for you as well. And if you want to kind of deep dive into those, just um, I'll put those links down below so that you can really unpack and look at even just previous collections they've done. So in terms of what I'm gonna look for today, all of these pieces are not your standard, you're gonna find it every time. So I don't know how it's gonna go, but I, I wanted to share all of this inspiration with you and I'm gonna go to the thrift store. We're gonna see what we can find. I might not bring everything home, but I just wanna even show you the kind of exploration of the store and just even items that I'm looking for. So I'm going to look for florals. I love the idea of even floral slip dresses or nightgowns. They can often be used within this inspiration. Sheer pieces are um, on the top of my list. Even some menswear that could be mixed in with some of this dainty and romantic uh, you know, florals and dresses. I also love taking inspiration just from the, even if you go back to the Met Gala inspiration of the Gilded Glamour. So I think of embellished pieces or brocade, which, you know, that's more heavy than what the season that we're going into, but you never know. If you can find a piece like that, I think you should keep it and hold it for the next season. And then I'll be just looking for drama, like full skirts, those puff sleeves, anything with a square neckline, anything like a corset or something that is gonna be cinching at the waist, but then paired with something full or ruffled or just lots of interesting elements to it. I also think anything that feels like petticoat style. So I think I'll be looking a lot at white, which I don't always look through the white sections. I feel like often I'm looking for colors and really bold prints and things like that. So I think it'd be fun to kind of look in the white section because I mean, it also makes me feel all those summer feelings of like those warm days in the summer. And there's something about like a white cotton piece, like a dress and sandals and a straw hat that feel so romantic and just a total escape into the beauty and uh, magic of Bridgerton or just even that uh, cottage core, any of that. So I'm really excited. This is gonna be so much fun and I love kind of having all of this inspiration. This is how I often approach uh, sourcing is just filling my brain with inspiration and ideas so that then it's my eye is turned on and ready to find those pieces. So let's go to the thrift stores. Before we leave, I thought I would show you what I'm wearing just so you can kind of see the inspiration and how it was translated. I have this really cool piece that was floral and was more of a house dress. I ended up chopping it and I love all the details to it. Feels very much like that house dress idea, the floral house dress. And then I took this ribbon here and tied it onto a little brooch that's holding this piece together. And then I like how it created this asymmetric shape over this really fun dress that is more 
of that style, which just worn on its own would be perfect, but I want it to go a little crazy. So then I put it with this dress and then I layered that petticoat, that lace petticoat underneath, which even has a little bit of a crinoline. So it adds even more fullness to it. And I would say I am very inspired by Simone Rocha's collection and this feels like a little bit of what they did combined with Airdom actually and I threw on my chunky Ghani sandals to add that kind of juxtaposition of a crazy exaggerated tough piece and I like adding the little black bow there as well and then this is just a little Cezanne bag again I love mixing in the straw with this look and then for my hair I did a little bit of that low messy bun and I thought it would be fun to do pearl detail earrings, but with some of the kind of punk element that it's really exaggerated. And there's even some silver wire that holds it together that I feel like ties in this sandal. So this is my look inspired by Bridgerton as I head out to the thrift stores. <music> today because I do feel like looking for more dreamy, flowy, easy breezy pieces are where I'm at. And then already I found a few white and dainty floral, more current pieces but are really great. More of that petticoat look that I'm uh, trying to find. So this is more of a little nightgown situation. I like the idea of even maybe chopping this off and letting it be kind of empire waist, but then with some raggedy pieces on the bottom to do layering with. This is just really simple, but what I like about it is it has this little sheer piece at the bottom. Again, another piece for layering, kind of like I'm doing today where it would be tiers of dresses and fabrics. And probably the thing I'm most excited about that I found, nightgown situation very much of that house dress that I was talking about and it looks like it's handmade so it's got this really cute ruffle detail here and even the bottom has kind of like a thick hem which creates some heaviness so that it hangs really nicely and it has more of that square slash sweetheart neckline that it's huge for this aesthetic also, this would be really cool to recreate with. I think like cutting it and then bringing some pieces up and adding some tears to it, um, creating some drama. I spotted this. I am not going to necessarily take it, but I just want to show you this dress. You know, it's probably like a early 2000s little prom dress situation or bridesmaid dress. Um, I love, I mean, this is so much of that color of the Featheringtons. And just this has that really great embellishment on the entire waist. This would be so incredible if you cropped it and had like some uh, flowing pieces kind of coming out. So I finished this section of dresses, and I found a few in the in the black dresses that are interesting. I don't always look in the black uh, section, but this is cool. It has like this embellished little piece on it. The way I like about it is the embellishment and then also kind of more of that um, corset waist. And then it has all of these kind of tiers and pieces. It reminds me more of that Simone Rocha, like more gothic elements with this look. And then this is different but could also be fun. This is like early 2000s little prom dress probably, but I really love this bodice. It's that empire waist and it has a big bow right here. It's kind of short, so really cute. I feel like I've been finding a lot of pieces that I either see chopping or doing layering with them. Found this little bag. That's so cute. It reminds me very much of the color palette, and even some of the embellishments feel very Regency. I like it crossbody. I popped into pajamas. I was hoping to find like some slip dresses. It didn't find any. I found this PJ set. I like the saturated bubblegum pink of it. It feels like if they did wear pajamas like this, they might wear this. Um, and I like the idea of separating them and wearing the pants under things. 
so this has potential. As I was popping into pants, I was kind of thinking about more of the men, uh, menswear looks within Bridgerton, and I found these pinstripe navy pants that are just so classic. I just feel very refined. Um, and then these are checking that petticoat box. Um, they're just super lightweight white cotton pants, draw, drawstring. Um, so I see that almost as like undergarments, taking the undergarments and pulling them out and just even wearing like a white men's button down, which is reminding me I'm going to go check the men's section. Um, and even some brown loafers and doing a straw hat. That's a way to capture the Bridgerton uh, aesthetic more simply and kind of was more of a menswear twist. I'm wrapping up. I popped into tops. I found a few options. This is a more current piece, but I might even just bring it to try things on because it's definitely that square neck, more of a puff sleeve. So that's just fun to envision the vision. Um, this is just a great little cotton white button down. More of the menswear. It's also from 579, which like one of my magical places when I was probably 13. So that's nostalgia right there. I like this because it's sheer. And it's got some of the kind of the ruffle details. I like the idea of layering this over things with the sheer. And then this is very much the brocade. This is vintage Neiman Marcus. Um, very cool little jacket. No, I'm gonna end up bringing it home. This three-quarter length sleeve is not always my favorite, but I love just the feeling of this. Feels very Regency. This is just a little fun find. This is old Arnold Palmer old polo shirt. I love that for spring or summer evening. So I might just scan some of these tops, but otherwise, then I'm gonna go and look at everything I have. Oh, and pop into the men section too. Um, and then, you know, start trying things on, weeding things out, doing all of that. Starting the try on process. These are those white pants that unfortunately they're just like too billowy. They almost feel like jodhpurs, which I kind of like it with this. Like that makes a really cool shape. This is that little shrunken white shirt, which I do like. I think this could be really great too with a corset over top of it. And I like how it naturally creates a corset shape. And because these are so round, it actually makes it really interesting. I feel like a fencing uniform. And here is the white little sheer shirt. It looks like what I'm looking for, but it feels kind of cheap so I don't know if I'm gonna bring this home here's those men's style pants um, they're like a little bit big where they're not supposed to be so again probably passing on these but I like the overall feel that this is creating I feel like if I had like a men's riding jacket I would be capturing some of the, the menswear style from Bridgerton this is actually cooler than I thought. It's that Neiman Marcus brocade little number. What I really love about this is that it basically is like wearing a corset and the sleeves, though they are three to three quarter length, I like this styling with the sleeve hanging out and it really does feel very Regency style. I don't know, I kind of dig this. I think I'd have to have the right shirt because it is more snug, but this is really amazing. Here is that modern shirt, which I really love it. I love this color and I might bring this home just so that I could have this shape with this neckline to work with. Yeah, here is that beautiful little nightgown number. Totally, literally what I was imagining finding. It's perfect. It's like summer and a dress. I also think this would be really cute, kind of belted and cinched in too. But then I love like how it kind of just hangs. So that's perfection. Here's the white petticoat little number. 
so sweet and just super simple. I really just like this as a house dress for the summer, but I also think this has like some potential to be styled up. I like that it has buttons here. Like I feel like I could add some kind of bustier to it, maybe even a, a white, more puff sleeve shirt underneath it. Even add some of that black ribbon detail. It's more of the empire waist, not like exactly empire, but kind of more of that empire waist of uh, Bridgerton. So I think I might bring this home just even if it just gets worn around my house. Those things make me really happy, but I actually think there's options with this. And then this is that little white dress that has that sheer panel at the bottom. And again, I feel like this has some potential for playing, um, almost seen as like a camisole that I would wear with other things, layer with things, even put it over, put it under. I like that it has the sheer panel here at the bottom. So very versatile. This was so cute. I don't actually think it'll zip up all the way, but I love like I would have loved to work with this. I think either like ruching it up, layering it over pieces, um, even if I just chopped it, but I think I'm gonna have to pass. But this would have been a lot of fun to play with. Okay, here's the PJ set. So cute, but there's actually some holes down in the pants here. So, and it doesn't fit like great it's a little bit ill-fitting so i think i'm gonna pass it's also not something i necessarily need it's just really cute but i think that's it in terms of my bridgerton pieces i'm now gonna kind of go through and make a few decisions so i'm making my final decisions i did make a bunch of cuts i just didn't want to do too many things and there wasn't enough that i was like dying over so I am gonna bring home this. Uh, this is absolutely perfect and I love it. I like that it's a little crossbody and it has the colors of Bridgerton. It even, even has the embellishments that were all over the show. So I think that's a cute little addition. And I feel like just even accessories like this can just create that feeling without you going over the top. So just even finding little accessories. This is my 100% ES and this is exactly what I was looking for. It's basically what I'm wearing but just in a pink version that's a longer dress. I'm gonna bring home this 579 top. I just feel like it's a great classic, but I also love that it's more tailored and creates the corset waist. And then I think I'm deciding to pass on this, mainly because I feel like it's not the best version of what this could be. I'd rather find a really great vintage um, petticoat style dress, and I feel like I could even find that at the flea market, so. This is a no. And then that Arnold Palmer little polo, I'm gonna bring this home. I just love it. It has the dagger collar from the 70s. And then it has this little umbrella detail, which is so cute. And I kind of like the idea of tucking this in and wearing it more with like a pleated skirt or a pencil skirt, kind of doing athleisure a little bit, mixing this with more dressy pieces. All right, so our Bridgerton experience has come to a close, but what is so much fun, and I bet on a whole nother level, ridiculously inspiring, is that Margot, Anna Margaret, um, has a video up right now that you can watch. So I'm gonna put her link down below. I know her goal is often to find a lot of home decor and things like that as well. So I think that's gonna be really fun to see what she finds when it comes to home, uh, home interior finds, and then if she finds any fashion pieces, which I do feel like the Bridgerton inspiration in your home is so much fun to play with, and I feel like that's something that can really easily be found in so many thrift stores and flea markets. So definitely head over to her video and check it out. Get so inspired by it. I hope over here you experience, even just for me, soaking up some of the inspiration of the show, the color palette, the items that kind of go within 
that um, aesthetic and then also just looking at some of the different collections that really capture that inspiration so much and can be translated into you know the everyday and kind of a modern take on the Regency era style. And I'm excited about the few pieces I found, not a lot, but really that floral little dress is absolutely perfect. And I really love that little bag. I feel like it's a little dash of Bridgerton on my outfit. It was a good day of thrifting and soaking up inspiration. Just a little reminder one more time to go check out Margot's video, which the link is down below. And please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. You can subscribe to my channel. I have new videos every single Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And finally, always play dress up. And I'll see you guys later. Bye! Bye.